Hello and welcome. My name is Karen Dawn and today I am exploring altered books. Now altered books is a really great way to reuse resources and I don't mean just by reusing a book. An altered book is a, for me anyway, is a art journal that I have created from a used book. But it can be so much more than just reusing a book. You could also be reusing old art journals. And that is what I am going to share with you today. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking some of my older art journal pages and reusing them inside of an altered book. Along with reusing pages, I'm going to be using some of the supplies that I just have around me. If you're anything like me, you probably have a lot of supplies. And it's really addictive to go out and buy new supplies, but there's really something special about reusing the supplies that you have or just using up the supplies that you have. Don't be afraid to use what you have. You don't need anything new. So for this little class, you're going to need an altered book. And I have one that I've started here. I've made a, a cover for it. This is just a fabric cover that I did some collage on and adhered to this old children's book, which is about 40 years old, but it's in really great shape. And it will make a really great altered book. Here is a page that I've already done. As you can see, this page right here, I, I did drawing in and painting in. I'm going to select another page to work in. I've already kind of put some of my leftover paint from another project onto this page. And I'm going to select a, um, a page from this older art journal that I have. And I'm going to start taking out some of these pages. Now this can kind of be a scary thing for a lot of people to start removing pages from an art journal. But I really think of it as a special opportunity to reuse some of the supplies that I already have. Some of the things that I've already worked in. These are resources that you have that are uniquely you. You can't get these supplies anyplace else. These come directly from you. So I'm just going to go through this journal and maybe just tear out some pages thinking about, you know, how these could be collage elements. I love picking out um, colors or selecting my, my images based on the colors that I already have. It's one of the nice things about working in an old children's book is they generally are very colorful. So it's easy to find things that match. And don't think that these scraps that I tore out um, have to, they don't have to go to waste. Um, I used this side of it, so I tore that off, but if I turn it to the back side, I can get some more really fun collage elements.
So you might find it really hard to reuse journals like this. And know that you don't have to um, reuse them in this way by tearing them out. That might be just too difficult for you. You can make photocopies of them. But honestly, I think there's something really special about when we can reuse things in this way. So that was just two pages that I took out of a journal, an old journal of mine. And now I'm going to make a new page out of it. And what's another thing that's really interesting about this process is that the images that I drew or selected in the past can be applied to a new page in a way that maybe I find a new connection. Maybe I find a new meaning for them. The images that you've used in the past are images that, that have a meaning for you already. You've already selected them. And it's another opportunity for you to explore what those images might mean. One of the things that I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm peeling away, um, separating these out so I have two sides of the page. And um, a lot of times on old art journals, it can get kind of thick so you can peel them away. And that also might give you an opportunity to take one piece and turn it into two pieces for collage work. But it can also just kind of reduce the thickness of what you've got going on there. Not everything's going to peel away nicely like this, but you know, it's kind of nice that I can use both sides of that page. Now that I have some collage elements picked out, I'm going to select some um, some craft paints here. And the, the way I selected the colors are from the colors that are on my background and are on the collage papers that I've already selected. My goal with picking these colors is to be able to glue these down and add a little bit of paint on top to kind of blend them in to make these images look like they're part of the background and not just, you know, things that I cut out or, or in this case, I just tore and just stuck down. So I'm looking to, to do some blending of these. But the first thing that I'm going to do, well, actually, there are two ways to approach this. You could take some of your paint and put it in the background or you can go ahead and glue down your images and then start painting. Either way works. It You will end up with a different look with each way. So I recommend that you try things two different ways. Another thing that I'm going to do so that I don't glue my pages together from my other, my other pages in this book is I'm going to put a piece of scrap paper underneath. This just helps protect those edges of the other pages so they don't get paint and glue on them and get all stuck together. So now I'm just going to take some, some matte medium and do a little gluing. You don't have to have matte medium for this. You can use any glue that you've got. I just happen to have matte medium available. One of the tricky things about reusing pages from a previous journal is that you're never too sure if you use water-soluble or permanent mediums. 
So one of the things that you can do when you glue them back down is to put a layer of the matte medium on top, but try not to do too much brushing back and forth because if you do have a water soluble medium, it's going to pull that medium up. And it's okay if some of it comes up. That's kind of all part of the process, all part of the, I won't even call them accidents because they're not even accidents. Now I'm pretty much gluing these down in the place that I had originally positioned them. I think there's something that happens when we um, don't think about what we're doing too much and just allow things to happen naturally. You can kind of see on this one that my, my black pen wasn't permanent, so it kind of got a little streaky on there. After this matte medium dries, it will be permanent, and I won't have to worry about that coming up anymore. Now the pages that I'm working on in this altered book are, are they're fairly thick pages. If you have an altered book that has really super thin pages, you might want to glue a couple of pages together. Another way to help kind of add a little bit of heft to your pages is um, add a layer or two of gesso. And if you don't want to cover up the original page with the gesso, you can use clear gesso. It's just going to add a little bit more weight to the page. Right now I'm dealing with some of my, um, this page right here wants to buckle up a little bit, so I'm trying to press that down. But I'm not going to worry too much about if things want to come up because I can always tack them down later. I love, love, love trying to use all of the little scraps, even the pieces that I've kind of tore off. I love trying to get them on there and use every little scrap that I had planned on using that I had torn out doesn't always work out, but it can be really fun to, to use what you have. You'll end up with some really creative results that you wouldn't otherwise end up with. I'm going to lift this up because I've got quite a bit of glue on there. I don't want to glue my scrap paper to the back side of it. You can always, you can always grab new scrap paper. And I reuse my scrap paper over and over again until you can't possibly reuse it again. <laughs> okay, so it's it's really sticky. I've got a lot of medium on it. I've got some um, things that are wanting to come up so they're not permanent, but I want to get everything pressed down. In order to do that without getting my hands in there and, and maybe messing up some of these non-permanent mediums a little bit more, I'm going to take a piece of wax paper, which I reuse many, many times until you basically can't reuse it anymore. I'm going to put that down and then I can just take my hands and, and just kind of smooth things out, um, rubbing those pieces down. Or I can take a brayer and then I can peel this back. And I'm not peeling it back in a way that I'm lifting it up like this straight up. I'm peeling it back like this. That way it doesn't accidentally lift any of the papers. Now this piece of wax paper is pretty much, it, I think it's pretty much had it. Um, once the, uh, the wax starts coming up on it, it starts losing its ability to um, not stick. And that's when you know your wax paper has, has had it. You can already tell the way that this one feels that it's on its last leg. So I think that's going to be it for that.
but I probably got 10 or 20, maybe even 30 uses out of that one piece of waxed paper. But I always have more scraps. <laughs> This one's got more wax on it. I can tell it's not sticking as badly. Peels up much easier. You can always go in there and try to get down some of those um, pieces that want to wrinkle up on you. But, you know, wrinkles happen. <laughs> oh, part of aging, right? It's all good. Okay, so I have my initial layer of collage down. And remember, this is just, I am, this is completely reusing materials. The only new material on here is the glue that I used. And that's it. I'm going to give this a quick dry. And for that, I'm going to be using my, my heat tool which you'll generally find in the embossing section of your crafting store. You can also use a hair dryer. That works well too. Or of course, you know, just let it dry, give it some time. But I do want to let this dry a little bit um, before I go on to putting some paint on it because right now it's like really super, super wet. Okay, so you might be wondering, well, Karen, I don't have an old art journal or I really don't want to tear the pages out of it and I don't want to make photocopies. So what's my alternative? Well, my favorite resources are using the um, art magazines and primarily the Somerset magazines and they have, they have a few different ones that are really great for getting your images. And basically what you're doing when you're using a magazine like this is you are reusing somebody else's art journal. And you don't have to, you know, just like when I tore up my pages, if I take something from that somebody else did, let's see, let's take this page out. So if I use, reuse something that somebody else did, I don't have to use, you know, I don't have to glue down the whole thing. Like, you know, I'm not reusing it so that I can claim it as mine, but I could take little elements from it. A lot of times these, um, these magazines will contain other collage elements that they use. So I've got like a, a wing here and I might find a, a place for that. And I don't have to just stick to um, tearing things. I can cut things out as well. But other people's art journal magazines or, or art journals um, are a really great resource for reusing. And again, I prefer to to not make photocopies of things because then I'm just creating a new version of it. I really want to participate in recycling and reusing. So that's another way that you can get some really great images to use in your altered book art journal. Okay, I've given this a little bit of a dry. It's still a little sticky, but that's fine. It doesn't have to be super, super dry. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the paints that I had picked out that have the colors that um, match on here, and I'm just going to add a little bit of paint. And there's a couple of different ways that you could do this. You can just put it on like that. What's really nice about when you do it this way is there's no waste at all, as opposed to if we put it into a palette like this. Um, this is actually, I forgot about it. I could have put this in like a little plastic baggie and these paints wouldn't have dried out, but now they're all dried in there, you know. So there's no waste when you put it on your page like that. I really like that idea of, of no waste. Now, if you take your paint and you put a little bit on each side, 
So um, oh, that was not shook up very well. When it comes out really super transparent like that, it means the glue or the, the glue, the paint has separated some. So you notice that over on this side, it came out really opaque, not transparent. And then when I put it down over here, super transparent, it's because it wasn't, it got separated. It's always a good idea to shake your paints up. And it's always a good idea to have a piece of paper towel around. Of course, you know, if you're talking about reusing, um, you know, paper towels can be a huge source of waste. You don't have to um, use paper towels at all. In fact, I love to just use um, old sheets. I tear them into rags. But of course, you know, it's when it, when you're working with a medium like paint, acrylic paint, you can only get so much on that on your rag before you have to toss it out. So sometimes a little bit of paper towel can really serve you well. So anyway, back to what I was doing. What I'm doing is I am I'm adding this blue on both sides. And what this is going to do is it's just going to kind of help bring these two pages together. So that I, cause I don't want to create two separate pages. I want this to be one page spread. Now the paint that I'm using is this uh, craft paint and it tends to be very opaque. If you're looking for something that has more transparency, you can you can either water this down, which can work really well, or you can use a more transparent paint like the um, fluid acrylics. But I like working with this inexpensive craft paint, especially on the first layers like this little what I think of as just my background layers. Another way to get it on your page with zero waste is to put it right on your brush. And you can get a very small amount on there that way. So you might want to play around with how you can reduce the amount of waste that you have, which I think kind of goes side by side with this idea of reusing and recycling is to not create waste in the first place. So now I have a really super wet paintbrush and I'm brushing that acrylic craft paint in and it's making a lot more transparent. And if you don't get it as transparent as you want, you can always go over it with a rag or a paper towel before it dries. And kind of brush it away like that. Yellow tends to be very transparent, but not this particular yellow. This is very opaque. Once I have down um, a little, a few layers of paint like that, and I didn't put very much on there. I definitely, I didn't want to be covering things up. I just wanted to add a little bit of color and make it so that the images um, are more blended. And um, so I think I've accomplished that. Another way to um, make your images blend into your background is by using stencils. Stencils are a great way to blend in images with backgrounds 
by overlapping the images, the image to the background. So you would take your stencil and you'd put it down halfway on the image. So it's kind of like putting it on the image edge. And for this, I will need some sort of, uh, I will need to put my, my paint in a palette. because I'm going to want to use a, a tool to daub in there. And all right, this introduces something that I love to reuse. These are cosmetic wedges. And I wash these out. You can use them over and over and over again until you forget to wash them out. Well, usually what I do is I'll use them and I'll put them right into my water so that they don't dry out. But you know, things happen, things get away from you, and you forget. But these are also uh, a source of, of something that you can reuse over and over and over again. So just doing a little overlap. I'm also using the same color that I had here, so visually it's very pleasing. Now another thing that I can do to help make this um, this design work with the whole page is I can add it to another area. Repeating patterns are very pleasing to the eye. And I can add another one, maybe over here on this side. I could do that same pattern. I'm trying not to put too much paint on my palette so I don't end up with waste like I did before. And I could even take this and do it off the edge of the page. Oh, I like that. You can do some more. Got a little bit more paint here, so I just want to use it up. When you're doing stencil work with these cosmetic sponges, the less that you have on your sponge, the more crisp your stencil is going to come out. If you have too much paint, on there, it's going to get pushed underneath the edges. Like that. So you can see there, I have two different, two different examples of the stencils. This one, I had less paint on it, so it came out nice and crisp. This is the same stencil that I used over here, but I had more paint on it, so it kind of squished underneath there, not so crisp. And I can even take the what's left on my sponge and do like a little um, shadow for like the edges of my page. Really using up the last of that. And now that I'm done with that, I can put it in my water get it in there. I can wash that out later knowing that it won't dry. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start enhancing some of these images that are, are on here that I've reused and start making some connections between them. Now I could do this with a uh, with pen but I just recently painted this and these are still pretty wet so I don't I'm not quite ready to take a pen to it. So what I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, some black paint and use my use a paintbrush to kind of um, draw with it. So one of the things that I have on here is I have these two repeating flower elements. And I could make a connection between those two. By creating a line that kind of 
This also is connecting these two pages. Ooh, I just ran into um, this other little um, icon here. I think I'm not going to put my... I'm not going to go right over it because I don't want to cover that. What's interesting is that I'm not really paying attention to where my line is going. I know that I want to connect these two flowers. And what happens in between while I'm making that connection could have some meaning. I think I'm going to go over this this symbol here to really bring it out. This is an Egyptian eye. I can go through this. I can I can go over my my flower. drawing over those petals, bringing it out. This is a great way to make images that maybe aren't your own to, to begin with. Maybe you, you reuse them from a magazine and by drawing over them you can make them your own. And since I did that one, I'm going to do this one as well. One of the things about doing art journaling is you're working in a visual language. And our minds are, are always trying to make connections. So our, our brains are designed to find meaning with things. So whenever you're working in your, your journal, you are looking for, looking for meaning. And I think it's really interesting when we play around with our old art journal images and start finding new connections and new meaning in them. I'm just taking my black paint and redrawing some of the um, some of the elements that I put down. I might even bring forward some of the children's book images that didn't get covered up. Maybe see how those connect. Because it looks like I have like children playing here. And this this um, was a uh, an element that I reused from an old journal. And I pu put it, not on purpose, um, but I put it over the top of this little girl that was in the background of my altered book. And it's almost like she's thinking about this, this little girl.
Another thing that you can do as you're working on your page is to make marks with your paint and your brush. I often do this when I'm not quite too sure what to do next. I always think of this as a way of meditating, a way to really take in what I'm working on. I can take images and work out from them, enhance them, make the make them part of the new spread that you're working on. doodle and draw into it with your paintbrush. So I have some interesting things going on here where this this gal here is it's like she is she's thinking about this little girl who maybe is playing in a garden and that garden has this connection she's she's watching this little boy play in his garden and this is like a, a journal. It has writing in it. And it's, she's connecting it. Maybe she's writing in a journal. She's writing about this experience. And then we have this spiral, which I didn't complete the spiral, but I have the impression of a spiral. So, and the spiral is this energy that's, that's also connecting these images. And over here, I'm going to bring this out a little bit more. There's a window. Windows are something that are very symbolic and they often show up in my art journals. So I'm going to bring that window out a little bit more because this window has a story to tell too. And I have the words kind of covered up here, but it's, I can see it still says, invite your, and there's a T and an R. So once this is dry, I might, I might take some of this, some of this writing and I even have some handwritten things and I might bring those back out. Um, like this one says, um, power of, I don't know, maybe it says fish but I could rewrite some, something else that I want to in there. So I'm going to go ahead and let this dry and then I'm going to, so I can do a little bit of pen work on it. Now that my paints have a bit of a chance to dry, I'm going to um, go over this with a, and this is still a, uh, this is a waterproof pen and because I might end up wanting to add some more layers of paint and collage. So I do want to use a permanent medium. I love the Uniball uh, Vision. It's called, a, it, this one is a fine pen, but it's actually got quite, 
quite a thickness to the tip, which I really like. This um, pen tends to play very well on top of recently painted surfaces, although you do want it to make sure that it's, it's pretty dry. So I'm going to actually start by bringing out the words that are I can that are peeking through. So I have invite your and I know that it has a T and an R, at least that's what it looks like, but I can go with that or I can completely change it if I want to. I think I'm going to turn it this the T into an I and the R into an N. Invite your inner. I don't know. The next word that's coming up for me is voice. Invite your inner voice to play. Out. Loud. I am just really actually just writing down the next word that comes to me in my in my mind. And I'm going to this wants to be emphasized this play out loud. And I think that part of what I'm doing now is reflected in these images. It's like the images are, are speaking to me, telling me, you know, what the message is. And there's this, there's this, remember I said, you know, she was like playing in a garden. But then there was also this, this writing in a journal. And there's something that wants to come out of that and not just be silenced in a journal, but to be, to have your voice, your inner voice, my inner voice out. The other words that I really want to work with here are this um, power of. So I'm going to go ahead and write that. Bring those words out. Power of. Imagination. And that really, that makes a connection with this, with this word play, the power of imagination is the power of play. Now I'm just doing some doodles. Interesting things happen when we just allow ourselves to doodle. I'm just doing some free flowing lines. Curious about what, where they might go. I think I'm going to take um, some paint markers and do some do some coloring in here.
while I'm co coloring this in, what's kind of rolling around in my mind is what does the flower signify for me? Is there a another meaning that is hidden in there? The yellow of the the flower there took me right over here to the window. Let me go make some lines here. I would like some sun rays. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna go in with that. So that flower now takes on a whole new meaning like it's um, like it's sunshine which makes me think of you know um, growth and life giving and having these flowers which are now turning into little suns on two different pages gives me some ideas about um, maybe like two different sources of of light two different sources that I might have a window of opportunity to tap into with my imagination my power of imagination and by playing out aloud. <laughs> I just love how things like that come up. And since I have my paint markers here, I'm just going to do some more little mark making things on here. You never know when you just take your pens or your paints and just start making marks. You never know what they might signify, what they might mean, and maybe they don't mean anything at all. Maybe they're just decoration. But these little blue, these are making me think of bubbles, like something's bubbling up. It's just like there's this Oh, the word that comes to mind is, you know, this is laughter. She has such a serious look on her face. I think I'm going to write the word laughter on here. And a few dots because I'm not quite too sure where that's coming from. I really like that idea of, you know, if you invite your inner voice to play out loud using the power of your imagination, you can bring forth like the light, this, these, and the bubbles of, of laughter. I really want to bring these bubbles out some more. Maybe make them look more like bubbles. You know, I could take the, take my black pen and outline them. Let's see what that does. I'm being kind of super careful right now because this paint is still, um, from the paint pens, is still kind of wet don't want to ruin my pen. I'm just kind of going over the outside of them. It's 
See, now they look more like bubbles. Well, that's kind of fun. And if I take my, my white gel pen, I might be able to add like a little element in, you know how they do that little crisscross thing? Makes it look more like a, it's shiny, like a bubble would be shiny. I'm trying to find places where the paint is dry. I'm not going to do this in all of them, but I like that idea of putting it in some of them. Ooh, if I take my white gel pen and I outline each one of these little dashes. Remember that was my little connection between my flowers. This outlining the, my little dashes that I did with a paintbrush and black paint. It's really bringing them out more. Kind of strengthening this connection. Maybe put a little bit of white in the eye. Strengthening that connection. I like that. I can even go back over here to my flower and outline that with white. Because the, these two images, the flowers, which I kind of have this radiating light and the connection between them seem to be a, an important theme for this page spread. And this journal too. So I'm going to do a little, I'm just going to outline this in white. Now this gel pen is not a permanent medium. So, but if I do um, some things over the top of it, the white isn't going to um, mess things up as much as if I were to use a black um, non-permanent and I, that would really smear over the top. But the white not so much. You can always put back on layers of white and they're not going to interfere as much with your background. But I think, I think it's done. So bringing out and finding new meaning from old images especially from old art journals that you have done can be a way to really find some new connections between maybe something that happened in the past and what's happening now in your life. Another thing that I, I really encourage you to do when you're working like this is to, to um, do some writing around it. You know, you might want to step back from what you've been playing on and give it some time to rest. But coming back and doing some writing, whether you write directly on the page or maybe you turn the page, like I could turn this page, I could cover this with like a white um, paint or even uh, what, what's really cool to write into with, especially if you've got the white gel pens, is cover this with a, um, a black gesso. 
can be really cool to write on top or even like I just turned the page maybe I I take my pen and I do some writing in these bubbles um, almost like a brainstorm you know what's coming up for me um, you know I, I could start off by writing some of the things that are on here power of imagination And I might do, because this is almost lending itself to, oh, this is like the bubbles. These are just like bubbles of ideas coming up, coming up. And, and then over here, um, the little boy, which was separate over here with the girl. They're together. Now they're playing, right? So, um, and that's another really fun thing about working in an altered uh, children's book is is you're writing in a, in a, in a storybook that has images that... Um, are connected and you're you might find that you're making new connections with that by the way you can pick up um, used um, children's books at I find them um, of course you can get them at used bookstores um, but library sales um, are another really great resource for them I actually picked up um, this book at one of those little local neighborhood libraries. You know, those little, I don't know if you have them in your neighborhood, but I, we have like an overabundance of them. And, um, and a lot of these books are of some age. So um, repurposing them and turning them into a new storybook, I think is really special. Um, how cool would it be to take something like this do your art journal work in it and put it back into one of those little libraries. Ooh, now that could be fun. <laughs> I hope you have enjoyed this. Um, I hope it's given you some ideas. I know that I, I did some things today that might be a little scary, like uh, tearing pages out of an old journal, but you know, um, there's something to be said about going back through the journals that you have worked on in the past and finding new meaning in them, finding new connections with them, finding those elements that, that repeat um, like um, eyes and flowers and using them in a way that's in present time where you are making new connections with them. Okay, until next time, I will see you later. Bye. <laughs>